distribution of functions of land of variables if you are given the pdf of x and you want to know the pdf of u that depends on x is equals to x squared that's what we want to do today and our two techniques will be considered we have the cumulative distribution function technique and the change of variable or what we call the jacobian technique so we will start off we start off with the univariate case using the cdf technique you let x be a random variable with a probability density function given by f of x is equals 2 over 3x and x lies between 1 and 2 and 0 elsewhere so want to find the pdf of of u is equals to 1 minus x squared so this is what we are interested in uh, remember we can also write this as u x is equals to 1 minus x squared meaning that u is a function of x look ourselves through the steps that are involved our first step that we want to look at is we want to find the intervals of u So when x is equals to 1, u will be equals to 1 minus 1 squared, which is 0. And when x is equals to 2, u will be equals to 1 minus 2 squared, which is 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. So when x lies between 1 and 2, then it implies that u will lie between negative 3 and 0. And in the second step, what we want to do is we want to find the inverse function. And how do we find the inverse function, which we are going to call w u. w u is our inverse function. We want to make x the subject of the formula. And that one will be 1 minus u least to power a half then our third step is we want to find d du of w u and so d du of one minus u least to power a half which is a half 1 minus u raised to the power negative a half times negative 1, which will be equals negative 1 over 2, 1 minus u raised to the power a half negative. Uh, but we will require the absolute value of that. So we get the absolute value of d, d, u of w, u. And the absolute value is a half, 1 minus 0, this to power negative a half. Our fourth step is to find f of w, u. So the f of x is given by 2 over 3x. Therefore, f of w of u is equals to 2 over 3 w of u. And that will be 2 over 3, 1 minus u, less to power 1 over 2. And therefore, that's our fourth step. And finally, our fifth step is to find g of u. And the g of u is given by f of w u, then times the absolute value of d d u of w u. So that comfortably takes us to 2 over 3, 1 minus u raised to power half, times a half, 1 minus u raised to power negative a half. Those combined together, 
will give us the g of u and uh, we have the limits so we can comfortably say g of u is equals to the third when u lies between negative 3 and 0 and then 0 elsewhere and that gives us the pdf pdf of u is given by g of u in this example the second example is on the Jacobian technique. We let x be a random variable with a probability density function f of x is equal to 2 over 3 x plus 1. And x lies between 0 and 1 and 0 elsewhere. We are told to find the PDF of u is equal to x squared. Going through the same five steps as in the previous example. The first one is we want to get the intervals. So when x is 0 u is equals to 0 and n x is equals to 1 u is also equals to 1 so we can comfortably say from this that when x lies between 0 and 1 the same case will apply u will also lie between 0 and 1 so our first step is to get the intervals then we move on to the second step and this is the inverse function and we say that w of u is equals to x is equals to the square root of u or if you wish you can say it's u raised to power uh -uh. our third step is to get the jacobian and basically uh, this would write it as that form so the Jacobian will basically will be the d derivative of d du of w of u which is d du of u raised to power a half which is a half u raised to power negative a half and then our fourth step is to find f of w of u what do we know we know that f of x is equals to 2 over 3 x plus 1 and then we can say that f of w u is equals to 2 over 3 w of u plus 1 and this is 2 over 3 then our w u and the w u we found it to be the square root of u and then plus one that's our fourth step and finally our last step which is step five is we find g of u which is given by f of w of u then times the jacobian so I can comfortably say that my g of u is 2 over 3, 1 plus square root of u times the Jacobian that we found to be a half u raised to the power negative a half. And this is a third u raised to the power negative a half plus 1. And that's the g of u. So summing it up. We can say, therefore, our PDF of X, PDF, our PDF of U, G of U, is equals to uh, that, 1 plus 1 over square root of U. U lies between 0 and 1, and then 0 elsewhere. And that gives us the PDF of U for that using the Jacobian technique another example using the jacobian technique but this time we are dealing with a discrete case we are told to let x be a random variable with a probability mass function f of x is equals to 1 over 6 x plus 1 x is 0 1 and 2 we are told to find the pdf of u is equals to 1 plus x squared 
the procedure applies again whereby in our step one is we get the interval or the values so when x is equals to zero then u is equals one plus zero which is one when x is equals to one u would be equals one plus one squared which is two and then when x is equals to two u will be 1 plus 2 squared is equals to 5. And therefore, we have the values of u. u is equals to 1, 2, and 5 versus the ones for x is 0, 1, and 2. So we are interested with the values for u. Our second step is to get the inverse. And uh, the inverse is given by, we can still call it w of u which is x, which is u minus 1 raised to power a half. And our third step is the Jacobian. And one thing we want to keep in mind, that we are not going to compute, uh, so x, so first of all, x is univariate and discrete. there is no transformation. So if there is no transformation, it means there is no Jacobian. So we are not going to get the Jacobian, and therefore what we'll just do is we assume the Jacobian is one, or we don't uh, use it in the equation that you're going to have. Step four is to find f of w of u. So f of x, is equals to 1 over 6 x plus 1 and we can use that to get the f of u and f of w u is 1 over 6 1 plus w of u which is 1 over 6 1 plus what is our w of u from the second step that we did it was u minus 1 raised to power r. Uh, uh. And then finally, our fifth step is to get the g of u. How do we get the g of u? It's basically the f of u times the Jacobian. The g of u is equals to f of w u, then times the Jacobian, and we say that the Jacobian should be equals to 1 because we did not do any transformation. So the g of u can therefore be written as 1 over 6, 1 plus u minus 1 raised to power half, u is equals 1, 2, 5, 0 elsewhere. It is so heartwarming to know that we can even prove that we can show that we can show that G U is a PMF. And how do we know do that? We sum U is equals to one, two, five G of U, and this should be equals to one. Let's show that to be the case. Uh, we go through the steps. So the step means that it is 1 over 6. When u is 1, it will be 1 plus 1 minus 1 raised to power a half. Then plus 1 plus 2 minus 1 raised to power a half. Then plus 1 plus 5 minus 1 raised to power a half. And this part, this will be zero. And so here it will be one plus zero. This is one plus one. And this will be one plus two, which is three. Plus two is five, plus six. So it's equals to six times. One plus two plus three, which is six over six, is equals one. 
thus g of u is a pmf so it's true that u is equals to 1 plus x squared we have been able to do the transformation we got g of u which is still a pmf and then we now consider a bivariate case and the first example is a continuous uh, joint probability density function where we are given x and y to be two random variables with a jpdf and the f of x y is 4 by 3 x y x lies between 0 and 1 and y lies between 1 and 2 we are told to find the joint probability density function of u is equals to x plus y and v is equals to y minus x first step is we want to find the inverse of the function and therefore we are told that u is equals to x plus y and v is equals to minus x plus y and therefore if we sum this we get u plus v is equals to 2y and that tells us that y is equals to a half u plus v and then in the second case u is equals to x plus y and v is equals negative x plus y and therefore if we subtract it will give us u minus v is equals to 2x and therefore x is equals to a half u minus v and therefore those are the two inverse functions that we have which we can express them in terms of w and uh, we have w1 of uv which is basically our x is equals u minus v over 2 and w2 of uv is equals to y which is u plus v all over 2. Having found the inverse we want to move to a second step. We want to find the intervals where x and y lie. Remember x lies between 0 and 1 so when x is 1 u minus v over 2 is equals to 0 and that implies that u is equals to v. The second is when x is equals to 1 it means that u minus v over 2 is equals to 1 which implies that u is equals to v plus 2. What about y when y is 1? u plus v over 2 is equals to 1 and that implies that u because remember the value of y lies between 1 and 2 then if v I can write that is equals to 2 minus u. Having said that we can get the second value of y y is 2 so it is u plus v over 2 is equals to 2 and that implies that v is equals to 4 minus u. You can express this in different forms. I could have expressed this as v plus u is equals to 4. I could have also expressed this v plus u is equals to 2. I could have expressed this as u minus v is equals to 2 and this one u minus v is equals to 0. So those are the different forms that you have for your equation. So what we are saying that uh, we say that x lies between 0 and 1 then it technically implies that u minus v lies between 0 and 2. y lies between 1 and 2 which implies that u and v will lie between 2 and 4. So that's the expressions that we have for that equation. Having said that, we move on to our third step and we want to find the Jacobian of the matrix, the matrix, the Jacobian matrix, which is dx du and then dx over dv, then dy du and dy dv. And uh, we add our original x and y's. So if we differentiate x with respect to u, you get a half. 
if we differentiate x respect to v we get negative and both of these will be positive uh, apps which is a, a quarter minus minus a quarter which is a half so the jacobian is equals to one over two our fourth step we want to find f of w1 uv w2 uv and therefore f of w1 uv w2 uv will be equals to 4 over 3 and then w1 was u minus v over 2 w2 was u plus v over 2 and uh, we want to expand out that expression to see what we get first of all we have 2 2 2 so we have 4 over 3 times a quarter when we expand out this will be u squared plus uv minus uv minus v squared so this is a third u squared minus v squared so that's our fourth step and we move to the last step which is the fifth step we find the g of uv and g of uv is equals to f of w1 uv w2 uv times the absolute value of the jacobian which is a third u squared minus v squared and then the jacobian is one over two and so what does that give us as our final expression we can therefore write our g of uv is equals to one over six u squared minus v squared u lies between zero and two and u plus v lies between two and four and then it's zero elsewhere so that gives us the joint probability density function of u and v for a continuous case we have another example for a bivariate case and uh, this example is on a uh, discrete uh, joint probability uh, mass function f of x y is equals to a quarter x plus y x is 0 and 1 and y is 0 and 1 and 0 otherwise we are told to find g of u v if u is equals to 2x and v is equals x plus y uh, the first step is we want to find the inverse of these uh, functions and so the first uh, step we have is that uh, definitely x is equals to u over 2 and that means that w1 of u v which is equals to x will be u over 2. Since I have x, then I can get uh, y, and y is equals u minus uh, y is equals to v minus x, which is v minus u over 2, which can also be written as 2v minus u over 2. And therefore, w of 2 of uv, which is my y, is 2v minus u divide by 2 so we have the inverse functions and therefore the second step is to find the intervals of the new variables u and v so we know when x is 0 then u is also 0 and when x is equals to 1 u is equals to 2 so x is equals to 0 1 and u is equals to 0, 2. That's our first part. Our second part is uh, when y is equals to 0, then v is equals to u over 2. And then when y is equals to 1, 2v minus u is equals to 2. So v is equals 2 plus u all over 2, all 1 plus u over 2. 
so that's the second set of values so what are we saying we are saying that when y is equals to 0 and 1 then v will be equals to u over 2 and the second one will be u over 2 plus 1 and we've been able to find the intervals the third step would have been the jacobian uh, step 3 is the jacobian but uh, we are dealing with a discrete case so we ignore the jacobian or we just assume is equals to one uh, unit value so that it doesn't change anything we don't get the transformation of a discrete case our fourth step is to find f of w1 uv and w2 uv so that is our fourth step so f of w1 uv w2 uv will be equals to a quarter and so instead of uh, x uh, remember the value of x x is uh, u over 2 and then v will be uh, y will be v minus u over 2 and all this will give me v over 4 for w of w1 and w2 f of w1 and f of w2 step 5 is to find the g of uv and as our final step g of uv is equals to v over 4 times 1 uh, because we say that the jacobian is 1 so we can comfortably say that the joint distribution for these two probability mass function is v over 4 when u is 0 2 and then v is u over 2 and then 1 plus u over 2 and 0 otherwise and remember we can prove that g of uv is a joint probability mass function i'm sure these videos are lovely please do subscribe thank you